We're talking Hall of Fame candidacy. Jim Basswell alongside Brian Campbell here on Making the Rounds. The subject is Sergio Martinez, who isn't exactly coming off the best fight of his career after being manhandled by Miguel Cotto. We have Dan Rayfield in reserve here. We'll start off with you, Brian Campbell. What say you? Jim, it's hard for me to take this dance, being such a fan of what Sergio Martinez has done in the ring and also outside of it. But my vote at this point is going to be no. And I think what you have to look at is really a small sample size. He was out the last year of injury, so you're really looking at a four-year window where he was the legit middleweight champion and piled up those victories. Uh, as long, uh, along with that, he also had a real tough time getting the big names uh, in, into the ring with him. So that's really where I stand right now voting no. Where are you at, Dan? Brian, naturally, I agree with you, my young Padawan learner. First of all, four years is a good sample size. Plenty of guys were in the Hall of Fame, had title reigns that were shorter than that in their respective divisions. And he wasn't just any old belt holder. Uh, he won a belt at junior middleweight, but he was the real middleweight champion for all those years at middleweight. And he won fights against a litany of different kind of styles. He was exciting. But here are the important statistics. He made six defenses, four by knockout. Four of those defenses came against undefeated fighters who were in the top 10 at the time that he faced them. They were good opponents. He wasn't fighting real just regular guys. In fact, if you take a deep look at his record, in my view, from before he won his title until the loss to Cotto, and including Cotto because of the caliber of opponent he was, he had what I would consider 10 real fights in a row. There were no breathers in there. He had two fights with Paul Williams, who was perceived as the most avoided fighter in the world. Well, guess what? He fought him twice. And not only did he beat him the second time by a hellacious knockout, a knockout of the year, it was a win that gave him also Fighter of the Year honors, helped him get there that year, which is in essence the MVP of boxing for that year, a very significant aspect of any Hall of Fame resume. I felt like he won the first fight. The draw that he had in the beginning of that run against Kermit Cintron is one of the most ludicrous things in the history of the world. And so you're looking at a guy that has done pretty much everything he could do. Yes, he had injuries, he lost to Cotto, and he didn't just lose to a regular guy, he lost to another guy that's going to be in the Hall of Fame alongside him one day. I see where you're coming from, Dan, you know, and I get you. I get your call. I have so much respect for Sergio, who really has so many Hall of Fame intangibles and was so good during that stretch. But look, there has to be something that differentiates who's a Hall of Famer and who's not. And I think, you know, the Hall of Fame in all the sports that we can look at that does that best is baseball. And Dan, I'm going to bring up a name who is near and dear to your heart, Don Mattingly. Although, you know, he had different opposite circumstances of Sergio Martinez. Here was a, a Hall of Fame guy who clearly had the talent, but because of injuries, wasn't able to put that together over that long stretch. We know Sergio got into the sport late. He too had that small window that to me doesn't stamp home overall on the full picture that he's a Hall of Famer. And I know there's Hall of Famers of all shapes and size. Some guys are in there because they, they connect with the fans like a Gotti or a Tyson. Some have been compilers. I think Sergio, Sergio is lacking all of that on a whole and it's just hard for me really to give him that stamp of approval. Well, I just don't, I don't agree with you about that because even if he didn't have those injuries, he's still 39 years old. His, his window was coming to a close anyway. So, yes, he got to the top late in his career. But a guy who spent several years uh, at worst in the top five pound for pound, a guy that will go down uh, besides perhaps Carlos Monzon as his nation's greatest fighter of, you know, in Argentina, that's saying something in a history uh, where there's a lot of good fighters that have come out of Argentina. He's done a lot of stuff and he won most of his fights in the title reign by knockout. And I go back to this, and this to me is the biggest thing. He took on top guys, time in and time out. Whether it was an undefeated Sergey Zinzerov, who was not well known in the United States, but had a title uh, at junior middleweight, was undefeated. He didn't just beat him. He dropped him like six times, annihilated him. Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., a much bigger fighter, uh, maybe not considered the best guy, but bigger, really strong, much younger. Other than the 12th round, shut him out. I mean, I'm not sure what else he would have had to do. Certainly a victory against Cotto would have made the case uh, to some respects. But what he has done, in my view, uh, is good enough for me. I'll vote for him, no question about it. It's our hot-button topic, countering point of views from Dan Raphael and Brian Campbell, the Hall of Fame candidacy for Sergio Martinez, who again comes off that loss to Miguel Cotto. We are making the rounds right here on the boxing page of ESPN.com. For Brian Campbell and Dan Raphael, I'm Jim Basswell.